Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Kessler, and I am here today on behalf of Cheers for Charity New Hampshire, and we are talking to another fantastic organization, and I have the privilege of doing this with my dear friend, Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, thanks. Well, welcome, welcome, uh, Joanne from Lighthouse Physical Therapy, and I'm um, looking forward to speaking with Jennifer today with Cornerstone VNA. So welcome, Jennifer, and please uh, introduce yourself and tell us uh, a little bit about uh, the Cornerstone VNA. Absolutely. So my name is Jennifer Gullison. So I am a registered nurse. I am currently in the role as VP of operations at Cornerstone, and I've been with Cornerstone for 20 years, um, right out of college and have grown up there, and I plan to retire there. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the services that you provide for our community. Absolutely. So we actually serve over 40 communities and we have a very large area. We do Rockingham County, Stratford, Belknap and Carroll counties in New Hampshire and in uh, York counties in Maine. So it's a very large service area. We cover ages birth to end of life. And so we do that through different programs. So we have a home care program that um, really is with the, um, unfortunately, the, the sick babies and sick children, either whether they've had surgery or they have an illness, um, all the way to um, the end of life, which is our hospice program. And in between, we have a palliative care program, which are nurse practitioners that go out into homes and do what we call old fashioned medicine and they'll visit patients in their home and they work with the patient's community provider um, to prescribe medications related to um, a life-limiting diagnosis. And that could be a cancer diagnosis or that could be something uh, like a chronic disease such as a respiratory or a cardiac disease. And then we also have a private duty program called Life Care, which is typically a self-pay program um, where individuals can pay for block services, whether it be for personal care for things like bathing, or if they need errands run or homemaking. So really through all of our programs, we want to be able to meet individuals at where they're at in their life and being able to do it, whether they need their recovering from a surgery through our home care program or need education to be able to manage their disease, or if it's something that they need extra help in the home through a private duty or through, you know, if they're at their end of life. So we have a variety of services. And what's really nice, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna say, yes, you do. You're, you yes. cover it from head to toe, literally. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And, you know, what, what's nice too, you know, we are a nonprofit agency. We are also independent, which is unique in the, the healthcare environment right now. A lot of DNAs are either owned by hospitals or they're part of, um, you know, they're for-profit or part of larger groups. So we've been around since 1913. So we've been around a long time and we continue to thrive and be strong. And I think one of the things that makes us so different is you know, we invest a lot into our staff, we provide a lot of the education, and we have a lot of specialized services um, to be able to provide that expert care to those in our communities. Yeah, we've um, worked with a lot of uh, patients that have uh, used you guys when they came home from uh, surgeries and have just a lot of really great things to say about your uh, practitioners that come into the home and um, take care of them. Um, so like specifically some of the um, professions that you have on staff to help people in their homes, because I know you probably do uh, home physical therapy, you have nurses, you have speech, OT, I, I, am I missing anything? You, you mentioned the nurses that go also in, um, uh, in take care of patients, um, I guess substituting yeah. like a doctor visit, you know, just so that they don't have to leave their homes. Yeah, so it's it, it's the skilled nursing, um, LNAs, which are the licensed nursing assistants under home care. We have all the therapies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech. We have the social workers. We do have a, a very good volunteer program across all of our programs, uh, which all patients can benefit from. And then the in hospice, it's the nurses, chaplains, um, a spiritual care providers, social workers, volunteers. Um, and then our nurse practitioners in our life care, it's, um, it's LNAs through the private care or um, what we call personal care support providers, also known as PCSPs. 
So a lot of different types of disciplines and services depending on the program. That's, that's fantastic. What a great, a great selection of services and you guys, you know, cover such a large um, market in the area as well, uh, geographically. So um, fantastic. Um, now, you mentioned you are a nonprofit, um, but I'm assuming, um, you know, people that are just getting out of the hospital that um, do have insurance, um, you're able to build them as well as I'm guessing people that don't have insurance, you have means of financially supporting them or is it um, all based on private pay? Um, how does yeah, that so for our home care and our hospice, um, we take patients regardless of their ability to pay, which is unique. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's really kind of like a, a sliding scale. We do have to request financial information to see if they have the ability to pay. But a lot of the patients that fill out that financial assessment really meet the criteria for, um, for free care. But, it, but there is a sliding scale fee. Most insurances, commercial insurances will cover home care at 100%. If not, small deductibles or co-pays, but Medicare and Medicaid do pay 100% of home care, um, as long as they're being followed by a provider in the community. This is great to, you know, they get out of the hospital, they need to be taken care of a little bit before they Absolutely. can get out and about. Yeah. Um, so, so how do people hear about, you know, how do they get connected with you when they need these services? So a lot of times there, the majority of referrals come either from a hospital or a skilled nursing facility. And you either the discharge planner or case management set that all up for the patient. Or we also get a large amount of referrals right from the community providers themselves. And, and they'll either make arrangements to see the patient first to make sure it's appropriate and then they give us the referral. But we do get calls from family members or patients themselves calling Cornerstone directly. Um, we do have an intake department and they'll call and say, oh, you know, my loved one you know, fell last night and I really think she should, should use some visiting services, we'll then find out the patient's community provider, reach out to them to try to see if they need to see them in person or if they have seen them like within a, a recent time frame, they'll just give us the order. So we try to help arrange that if we get calls from patients or families directly. Fantastic. And the other question that I had, you mentioned that there's volunteers who get involved and help and help you know, their, their community members. Um, what, how does someone learn more about, about that opportunity? So um, I encourage people just to go right onto our website at cornerstonevna.org. And there um, is, a, is a button to be able to click on to volunteer. And that volunteer can be a variety of different ways. It could be an office volunteer, which we have, and they can help with, you know, filling admission packets to, miscellaneous things around the office to going into homes to actually see patients. And that could be playing cards with them. That could be um, reading a book or doing different activities. It could be in our hospice program. And under hospice, you actually have to go through a volunteer training program. Um, it's a set training, um, very robust program. And it's working with individuals um, you know, towards the end of their life to give them that companionship. We have in hospice, it's called a, a pet companion or a pet peace of mind. And again, they have to go through the hospice volunteer training, but they're helping, you know, individuals keep their pets all the way till end of life by walking the dog or uh, giving them a bath or helping, you know, take care of them inside of the house. So there's many different ways to volunteer. And I encourage the easiest ways to go onto our web, website to, to learn more about that. Those are all great options. I um, I was unaware that that those were opportunities for people to get involved. So that's yeah. really great information to know. Yeah, and and we also have um, it's it's called a caregiver caregiver connect, um, and those are you know for community members that that take care of loved ones with a chronic disease and. Anyone that has had a family member or a friend with a chronic disease know how challenging it can be. And we try to offer in different communities, these different cafes to be able to connect with other caregivers that are going through it to get that, that support and to provide educational opportunities for them. That's huge. That's amazing. 
So how, how, how have you recovered from the craziness that was COVID? Is, have you gone back to- <laughs> Has country? anyone really recovered? <laughs> I know I was going to say you're not in the we're not in the midst of it anymore but it's yeah. still a, a serious concern for people with health conditions so what's yeah where do you where does how does that impact Cornerstone VNA? So we were actually very fortunate when COVID um, hit that we have a lot of means to access technology all, all of our field clinicians have tablets um, office um, we can have options between working remotely from home or in the office so it was pretty seamless when all of that happened through technology to be able to still do visits. And we also have a program called telehealth, which are tablets that get installed easily into patients' homes and they can have access to video in and connect with our nurse at the office and she can see the patient and they can see her. And they have ways to record all of their you know, blood pressure and weights and answer health screening. So they were, we were able to supplement in-person visits with what we call virtual visits with a nurse at the office. And, and that was able to meet the, the high volume of patients that we were getting during that, that surge. Yeah, I'm sure there were a, a huge uptick tick as one, doctors didn't want people coming in and people needed to be seen. So yep. yeah, that, that works out great. Fantastic. What kind of needs are you finding um, are your biggest needs you have as an organization? Um, so I think, it, you know, it's like our telehealth program that I talked about, that is not funded by Medicare. So that's something that's out of pocket. So we actually doubled our, the amount of units um, that we had during COVID and actually kept that amount of units. And so it really is with the nursing shortage right now that's, that's gonna be ongoing, if not get worse, we have to try to think out of the box and how we deliver care. And that's even with rehab. So being able to use telehealth to help supplement some of the in-person in visits with virtual visits is really critical, but yet Medicare is still not recognizing that as a valuable service and they don't reimburse for that. So that's a huge cost on agencies. That's in my utopia world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, this is great. Um, is there anything that you feel that we've, missed that people should know about we've covered so much um of your services and people um yeah no um there you know we we try to keep uh, events relevant um on our website so you know a lot of our information if people are interested in learning more on how to either get involved with cornerstone or interested in trying to access services different events that we have uh, um, going on we have a caregiver um, virtual event coming up in April um, that people can check out. And we always try to keep things up to date on that website. Fantastic. Well, just repeat the website one more time. So people, it, yep, it's a cornerstonevna.org. Beautiful. Jennifer, this was awesome. It's, it's so amazing what you guys do. I know the, John and I both know people that work with you that are just the, some of the kindest, nicest, um, just truly caring professionals. And, um, and I'm so grateful for the work that you all do for our community and to help our families and our neighbors. So thank you so much for taking the time You're to welcome. share with us too. And it was nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you as well.